We're good. The content discussed on this program is often medical in nature and is used for informational purposes only. No content discussed should be taken as medical advice. Please consult your healthcare professional for any medical questions. Hi, I'm Tori McGee, and this is the Rapid Recovery Report, sponsored by RomTech, the modern technology of rehabilitation. So we'll be doing this series uh, bi-weekly, uh, every other Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, and we're talking to all kinds of surgeons, patients, insiders at RomTech, and talking about a whole mess of stuff. So wellness, health, uh, touch a little bit on RomTech's Portable Connect. So if you're new here, uh, this right here that we're going to show on screen is the Portable Connect. Is it she a beauty? Uh, it's a high-tech recovery device that's geared to get patients moving and on the road to recovery a lot faster. So if you want to learn more about us and the Portable Connect, please uh, do check us out at romtech.com and you can follow or subscribe to our social channels that are in the description below. But let's move right on because today we've got a really uh, fabulous guest that I'm excited about. Dr. Jesse Botker uh, is a fellowship trained board certified ortho sports medicine surgeon specializing in arthroscopic minimally invasive joint repair. And he treats bone, joint, and muscle needs of athletes and active individuals of all ages. Dr. Botker attended the University of Minnesota Medical School in Duluth and Minneapolis, where he earned his Doctor of Medicine degree and completed his internship and residency. Uh, he was then accepted into the Arthroscopy and Sports Medicine Fellowship Program in San Diego, California. Woohoo, California. And uh, Dr. Botker now <laughs> is back in Minnesota at the Orthopedic uh, and Fracture Clinic uh, since 2010. And he proudly serves as an official team physician for Minnesota State, Minnesota State University Mankato Athletics and is a former physician for the San Diego Padres and SDSU. Welcome, Dr. Botker. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah, we're excited about it. So uh, we like to start our show usually to try to learn a little bit more about you, um, kind of an ortho surgeon icebreaker. So it's always really interesting for us to learn why certain surgeons choose orthopedics above pretty much anything else in medicine. So what attracted you to the field? Well, the stock answer that every orthopedic surgeon has to give is that you had a sports injury when you were younger and that's what really got you on track. So I'll start a little bit with that. I had an injury when I was younger, uh, one in, in basketball, um, you know, that, that kind of started things, but I have always been interested in, in sports medicine, playing three sports, you know, football, basketball, baseball, growing up football in college. Um, but what really attracted me to it is really the technical aspect of that's the surgeries. And I love to work with my hands. I think it was a great fit because I get the balance between meeting patients, seeing them in the office, uh, but also being able to, to get them back on the field of play or back to their lives and really see improvement. So what really attracted me to, to it ultimately was getting to watch the surgeries and seeing how cool they were from a technical standpoint. As I refer to it, it's carpentry in a sterile environment. Um, but then on the other side of it, it was seeing these patients come back and they're so thankful uh, mm -hmm. for what you're able to do to th for them um, at the end of the day. And so that for me was just a great fit um, that you can really feel like you can, you're making a difference. I love that. So let's talk a little bit about uh, sports prehab. And I know that that's important. One of our sales guys talks about it all the time. So um, we all know about rehabilitation, but can you explain yep. prehab to us and why it's so important? Yeah. So prehab, I'd say is really, you know, whether it's, it, it's really getting ready for a, a surgery and, and whether that's an elective knee replacement, hip replacement, or uh, let's say for instance, an athlete goes down with an ACL injury. I mean, that's really where the prehab is, is, is kind of, you know, taking, taking flight because with these patients, we've realized over time that if you can get their range of motion back to normal, their uh, swelling in their joint down, in, in, in particular case for an ACL, their knee, um, and you can get their strength back, they will have a much easier time recovering after that particular surgery. Mm -hmm. So in certain cases where patients go down with an ACL, we actually like to wait three to six weeks, ideally, until those we see those parameters met. And that we just know is going to make the, the recovery that much easier for them. It's a delay on the front end, but on the back end, you'll make up for it to, um, tenfold. Okay. And I mean, in the same vein, I guess, of, of staying moving and, and trying to be healthy, 
um, patients can get muscle atrophy that can lead to surgical intervention too, right? If, if they're injured and don't really want to, to move. Absolutely. We see this all the time. I mean, patients come in with a specific injury and whatever that is, that, that injury has led to, to, to muscle atrophy, is led to muscle imbalance and flexibility imbalance throughout that whatever region of that body that is. So, you know, and for instance, I work a lot with shoulder patients and whether it's a rotator cuff tear or a labral tear, or dislocating shoulder, those patients a lot of times will have something called scapular dyskinesis. Essentially their shoulder blade and their shoulder blade muscles aren't properly working in concert. And mm -hmm. if you go jump straight into the surgery aspect of that without addressing some of those things on the front end, you can still get the surgery done, get the rehab done. It just takes a while longer because you're retraining those muscles that are going to shut down with that surgery that you're doing for them. So ideally, yes, prehab is ideal, getting patients going, getting patients active. You know, I related a lot to if you are someone who is a very sedentary individual, doesn't work out much, and you decide to, to, to start a new workout program. For the next two or three days, you can barely move. I mean, that's what happens when we're doing surgery on someone. So if you're coming into that, your muscles are already, you know, tuned up, they're strong, you're in physically good condition, um, you know, your lungs and hearts and everything are, 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 you know, you're doing regular exercise routine. It's just, it makes everything go so much more smoothly. We see patients get out of the hospital um, and, and on to back on to recovery so much quicker. Okay. Well, that just makes me feel like I need to hop on my rower and start doing that in case something happens or I need surgery. <laughs> <laughs> so, Absolutely. Now, do most of your sports patients have like pre-existing conditions prior to needing surgery or are most of them that you see from an immediate injury that they need surgery? Most, well, I'd say, you know, it's probably a good 50-50 mix. I mean, I certainly have the acute injuries with, a, you know, a bad ankle sprain or or a fracture or an ACL tear. Um, but you also have patients that this has been kind of coming on for some time. And so, um, you know, they, 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 have, they do a repetitive activity, whatever sport or, or you know, the, the practice of preparation that leads to that sport uh, prior to it. And so you'll see a lot of, of chronic you know, injuries. You said sometimes you see the acute on chronic injuries where, you know, they, they were kind of getting by and then all of a sudden they injured something a little further. And now mm -hmm. it's time that they, you know, things are, are not going well and we need to consider a surgical intervention to get them back. Um, you know, so one of those things I, I see a lot is hip arthroscopy. So, um, you know, with, with the advent of, of arthroscopic means of addressing hip pathology and labral tears of the hip, a lot of those patients come in and they've been kind of, they may have seen three or four or five physicians trying to figure out what was going on. Um, they've been trying to rehab and, and finally end up in my office and, and they actually explain what's going on and, fit and can figure out and, and, and plan a path moving forward. So at what point, I guess, do you decide or you and your patients together decide to intervene and go the surgical route? Yeah, I think in those those acute on chronic or chron more chronic I issues, I think it really boils down to can you perform and do what is necessary on the field of play if it's an athlete? If it's a weekend warrior, how much is it bothering you and impacting your day-to-day -day activity? Is it something that you know you're getting by with, or is it now causing you to 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 withdraw from those activities? Not consider not doing those activities. And you know, I think that you know, all age ages, when you look at that, I mean, because I look at sports medicine as is is, is a wide spectrum of athletes. And you may be beyond your playing years in high school, collegiate, or professional, but mm -hmm. we still have, you know, those athletes. I just saw you know a patient in day in particular that that has said well because of this issue i gave up golf i've given up you know things i enjoy doing pickleball so they want to get back to those things and that's what we're moving on so i think it's a mutual decision making process with yourself the patients you know slash athletes and figuring out what is the best route moving forward is it something that we can rehab can we do injections or is the surgery going to be the best answer in the long run to get them back and, and, and back to 100 percent sure that makes sense so now i know that you do a lot of minimally invasive stuff and and new techniques and everything that you can to stay up to date so have your post-operative goals or expectations changed over the years after introducing new techniques or devices to aid in recovery? So like, where do you expect to see a patient now, you know, at two, four, six weeks versus, you know, five or 10 years ago for the same injury? 
Yeah, I think that the advent of our new techniques, new technology has in, in advanced rehab protocols has completely changed the game. If I look to when I started 15, 16 years ago, in, in, well, I've been in practice 11 years and I had six years of training prior to that. If you go back almost two decades and you look where we were at then, and even a decade prior with, with, with how they, you know, everyone said, well, we used to do it this way and now we're doing it this way. It is unbelievable how we have advanced forward. I mean, if you take, you know, ACL surgery mm -hmm. at its advent, they were casted for six weeks after that surgery. Most patients never got the range of motion back. Most patients never return to the field of play after an ACL. It was just an automatic, mm -hmm. we're just trying to get your knee better so you can walk for the rest of your life, not back onto the field of play. Now with some of the advanced rehab protocols we're doing, we're, we're cutting that time frame down substantially. We're getting patients better. With the advent of, of technology, whether that's 3D imaging um, to better understand the patient's anatomy and to, to put the implants in better, do the surgery better, to uh, the, the implants that continue to improve and allow us to repair whatever injury that is so that we can rehab them, we were really pushing the envelope with that. And that's, you know, I think uh, is great for everybody, great for the patients. And, you know, the faster you can get people back, I mean, that's just, it, it helps out everything. You know, as a surgeon, no one want, you don't want to be the guy that, that is holding every ACL out for a year and a half to get back because no one ever show up back in your office. Right. <laughs> Yeah. I, I mean, I'd, I'd find the guy that can get me better faster. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So now most of our guests have predominantly spoken about knee replacements and recovery for that sort of thing and, and some ACLs, um, but you do quite a bit of arm and shoulder surgeries. And yep. we're, we're curious about that because that's not something that we've really kind of delved into on, on the show. So uh, you use a procedure using the Arthrex virtual implant positioning for shoulder replacements. And yep. That involves uh, advanced imaging, surgical instrumentation specific to the patient, right? So can you explain that a little bit more to us? Yeah, so VIP, Arthrex VIP, so virtual implant positioning. Essentially what it is, we, dig it, we do a, a CT scan of the shoulder. So a CT scan is, is, subtracts out all the bone or all the muscle, the tendons, and just shows the bone. So mm -hmm. we're able to take a 3D image from that. And on the computer screen, you're able to rotate that image completely um, there and see what is the patient's normal anatomy, um, how, or how, what's their anatomy compared to normal anatomy. And so that allows you to then take a computer program and essentially plan the placement of the implant, <clears throat> in, in this case on the, on the socket side of the shoulder joint, to recreate normal anatomy <clears throat> that has, has you know, gone away over the years because of the wear pattern uh, with their arthritis. It allows you to better position that implant for longevity and improvement in their function. And so what we're seeing with that is that 3D, you know, and that's how I, I've always learned is, is, is by pictures and 3D type of thing. So when you're talking a 3D model, you can just understand it better in your head. I mean, a lot of things that you do, you have to have that 3D spatial recognition to really be, you know, to be a, a, a surgeon with what we do to be able to, 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 to scope and to, to put a camera in, a, in an instrument together. So <clears throat> that's just kind of, you know, branches off of what, what I'm used to. So with that, what I've noticed is that, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> what I've noticed is that it's allowed me to uh, more precisely place the shoulder in the in the way that it needs to be and uh, decreasing uh, the recovery time and improving patients range of motion. Wow. Do you feel like Superman when you can see somebody's bone 360 like that? <laughs> A little bit. I mean, it's, it's, it's really like when my, when I first started doing it, I was kind of skeptical, right? You do a lot of shoulder replacements. <clears throat> like really, I, I know what I'm doing on this. Mm -hmm. And then you start planning it and you see the, the nuances in patient's anatomy. And it really uh, opens your eyes to those little things. And it allows you to plan and be more prepared in it rather than just you know, getting in there and figuring it out while you're doing it, you, mm -hmm. you come in with a game plan. It's just, you know, I look at it from the sports side of thing. You got to have a game plan, you know, to, you know, practice through the week, have the game plan, execute the game plan on, on game day to, to win the game. And that's what we're trying to do is give the patient the best outcome, get them back to whatever they want, whatever it is they want to get back to. 
Now, are the are the tools that are being used are they customized as well to like as well as the implant? So there are two different ways that it can be done. <clears throat> so there is a uh, customizable uh, jig that based off that plan, we can adjust the, uh, essentially their feet that attach onto the socket. So mm -hmm. your socket shaped a certain way and the feet will each be at different lengths based off the patient's anatomy to attach onto the socket. So we can, we can do that, put that together on the back table. Um, there's also uh, 3D printers now that allow you to do a customized jig that attaches directly on and rotates to fit perfect to then put a pin in exactly where you need it. So there's there's both ways that this can be done. Uh, and I use the latter technology with the 3D printing on my knee replacements um, with my, you know, the customizable, uh, you know, 3D, um, 3D uh, uh, planning software as well. So, okay. you know, so there's two different ways, the two different implants, but they both accomplish the same goal. Okay. And we're diving back into shoulders again, I know. <laughs> so tell us about uh, reverse shoulder replacement. Tell us, I mean, what that is. It sounds really interesting. Yeah. So, and, and this is a commonly asked question. What's the difference? And everybody has this, this misnomer that if I get a reverse shoulder, that's a bad thing. Mm. And actually with the advent of, of reverse shoulder replacements, we've been able to change the game for a lot of patients that wouldn't be helped as much. So essentially it's been around for probably 20 years now. Mm. Um, as I was coming into it, were, the first ones are being put in, into, in, in the United States It started in Europe. And essentially what the problem was is that patients who have arthritis of their shoulder and have a rotator cuff tear, they do not do well with a regular shoulder replacement and mm -hmm. they, the, they don't establish their normal range of motion. Um, it can cause the socket to loosen prematurely. And so they tried using a larger ball that would extend over the top. Um, they've tried doing a lot of different things. When this came out, essentially what it does is it reverses the parts. We put the ball on the socket side and the socket on the ball side. What that does, it, it harnesses the power of your deltoid muscle, which is the large muscle on the side of your arm um, that makes up for those uh, rotator cuff muscles that aren't working any longer. And that changes the fulcrum or the position of the shoulder um, because of the, the, the ball being on the socket side and the ball, socket and the ball side in order to allow you to use the, the fulcrum in the muscle to raise your arm up. So these patients that have you know, essentially we call it pseudo paralysis. They cannot raise their arm up at all. You mm. put a reverse shoulder in them and they come back, you know, two months later and they have the most unbelievable motion ever and are some of the happiest patients that you have. Wow. So that's, you know, when I, when talking to patients, you know, it's a little bit of time to explain that to them that look, your, your, your recovery is not going to change at all from a regular shoulder and you're going to have great function after this. You know, when we first started putting these in, you could only put them in in 70 year old patients or old, you know, or older and very low, um, low, low level kind of, you know, function. We, we didn't want people, you know, doing all these things with it. Heck, we're putting it in patients younger and younger because we're seeing with the 3D, you know, planning software, we can put it in uh, where the, where we can put these, these implants in more stable. Um, they're going to last longer. And uh, with the implants continue to improve, we no longer have some of the restrictions that we have on patients. So I have patients going back to a, quite a lot of activities, pickleball, you know, if they want to go, you know, hunting with their shotgun, I let them do that. Yeah. You know, I, you know, there's still a few. I don't let them run a jackhammer and I keep them away from <laughs> splitting wood, but I'll let them do a, quite a bit of other things. <laughs> oh, I'd be nervous about the uh, shotgun penning. Those, some of those things are pretty good kick. No. Yeah, but no, so that, so that is, it's, it's a great option for patients. And in fact, it's, it's, it's interesting as it's grown um with its popularity because we see such good outcomes um we're much less hesitant to use it for patients and i'd say probably over half of my shoulder replacements are actually now reverse shoulders wow and is there a similar technique for knees or is that just a shoulder thing so knees are the same you want to put the femur on the femur side the tibia on the tibia side the difference with knees um really depends on on inherent stability. So if patients have collateral ligament injuries or injuries on the sides of their knees, their ligaments aren't stable, then we have to put in more of a revision style implant, which 
confers more stability in the knee, but knees are knees are knees pretty much um, overall. Okay. Now back, back into the knees, since we've dove, dove into it here, um, let's talk a little bit about your experience with the portable connect. So uh, I know that you're, you're using it on a lot of your patients. So how are they reacting with the device? I can't tell you when we look at things that have come into my practice and really changed the game, I can't tell you how much this has changed the game. I have patients coming in now routinely getting 125 to 130 plus degrees range of motion, which on a routine basis, you know, that used to be kind of the red herring that, that you know, you'd see it every once in a while. You say, Hey, great. You rehab this really well. I am now seeing this on a routine basis. I have patients coming back and raving about this saying, I really think it was that Romtech bike that <laughs> helped me along the way with getting my motion back. Um, I, I still hear, hear a little bit of skepticism from some of the physical therapists, sure. but of course, you know, I, I get where they're coming from. You know, they, of course, you know, they want to take a lot of the credit too. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to discount them at all because they do great things. But I do think it pay, keeps patients on a regimented rehab protocol at home. It's guided. They can follow along. And I'm just seeing unbelievable motion early and late. And, you know, they're using less pain pills. I've been really, really happy with it. And okay. trying to tell all my partners that you need to start using this for your patients. Good, good. Well, I mean, pretty soon everybody's going to be doing the thing where they go to you because you can get them back out healed Absolutely. faster and your partners are going to be like, what the heck gives? Well, <laughs> we're looking at yeah, so maybe, maybe I don't want to tell them about it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, last question. Do you have any thoughts on uh, the device as a whole and maybe its future, maybe for shoulders? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I think there's a lot of different things. And, you know, I've started to branch out with a little bit of, of uh, you know, some of the sports medicine side of the world with some micro fractures and things. I think that there's going to be, if you can get the right, um, you know, obviously we got to, you know, you're always working out kinks, right? And, and, and I think that if you look at where the Romtech's bike has been and how it's continued to improve and evolve, I see, you know, a lot of, of uh, um, good things for it in the future. I think you guys are doing a great job with taking patient feedback um, and trying to improve on some of those things that, you know, you're working out the kinks when you got a new technology. So I think there's a lot of role that, you know, I'm excited for the future to see, you know, what's going to come, you know, come down the, down the, down the uh, pike. Yeah, us too. Us too. Well, thanks so much, Dr. Botka, for spending some time with us. I learned a lot actually uh, in this interview. So thank you for that. Uh, no folks, problem. if you if you want to check out Dr. Botker and go see him in Mankato, he's at the Orthopedic and Fracture Clinic. Uh, you can follow them at www.ofc-clinic.com. And uh, thanks again, Dr. Botker. Be sure, folks, uh, to subscribe to our channel and and check us out um, at romtech.com. So we'll uh, we'll chat and good to see you again, Dr. Botker. Yeah, you too. Take care. All right. Thanks. All right. Bye. 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 -bye.